Hello, I've got a great one today. We're going to be taking a look at the PC Cooler F5 R120. It sounds a lot like a race car. Let's see if its performance meets the expectation. And before we get into it, I'd like to thank PC Cooler for sending me this fan as a review sample. No money exchange hands. I just got it to take a look at the fan. That's all it was. Anyways, a little bit of spec information, dual wall bearing. There's RPM, pretty good, 2200. Let's see if it meets that expectation. Noise level and its H2 mean time between failure. The first series of tests is the case simulation test, and this is, you got, think of it as an air-cooled type system, front-to-back airflow tech design, and depending on what size computer case, you want to focus on that specific data point the most in the following graphs. So that a brief explanation. The first is the 6 inch mark. This can be looked at in two ways. First one is you have the fans at the bottom of your computer case and you're blowing the air up towards your GPU, short throw distance. The second is in a mini ITX case, where it would be like a vertical mounted GPU, but a front-to-back airflow uh, pattern for your CPU socket. And equivalent length would be a single 120 millimeter class fan. Then we have the 9-inch mark. This would be like a compact tower. I think something like a media center PC would really fit in this size category. 220 millimeter class fans. Then we got the 11-inch mark. This is your standard mid-towers. Think of 360 AO or 320 millimeter class fans. And the last is the 14.5-inch mark, which would be like having 340s. Uh, in it and truly large towers like the Fract Design Torrent. Now we need something to normalize fans against. So I have a control fan. It is based three parts A12 function 5 to one part A14, blending them together to create a quote perfect or idealized 130 millimeter class fan. Uh, it isn't really perfect. Some fans do perform better than it. Fans perform worse than it. It's just a mark that I use to indicate what I consider a good fan. And in case airflow, the R5 isn't really hitting the mark. As a matter of fact, it's on the poor side. Let's see if it does better at 100%. Not particularly. Let's go on and see how it compares against other fans. Well, right here is the F5. It is well off the beaten pack from this main group of fans. That doesn't mean it wouldn't function as a case fan, it just means it isn't as good, so it's not creating a good concentrated airflow pattern. But if you're using it as a short dis throw distance, it's certainly adequate at a 10.5 decibel mark. It's a little bit on the low side, but it's perfectly adequate. Uh, take a look at it in another way in bar graph form. This is looking at the 6 and the 11 inch marks only. And it's pretty clear that at uh, the 11 inch mark, it's just not living up compared to other fans. But the 6 inch mark is pretty okay. Take a look at my 18.5 uh, decibel mark, or 17.5, 18 decibel mark. It's a little bit higher noise level, but it's still pretty reasonable, not too outlandish. Anyways, it's still underperforming compared to other fans. Uh, take a look at it in bar graph form. You can see there, we're gonna move on. And at 100% p fan signaling, let's see if it can brute force its way, no. It's still, it starts off pretty darn good, but it drops off very steeply. So if you're looking at anything other than a small computer case or something compact where it needs to force air through it, it's probably, you're gonna be better off serve, served getting something else. Um, locking in specific RPMs, uh, this was a viewer's suggestion, but it's not gonna change the story, unfortunately, for this fan. At the 800, 1,500 um, RPM marks. Taking a look at airspeed versus decibel rating, the airspeed was taken at the nine inch mark. This is where most fans tend to drop off from good airflow to bad airflow. So it's just that data point. It could be taken at any of them, but depending on where it is, it's gonna be a bigger differentiation. It just kind of seemed most reasonable here. Anyways, so the F5 is, well, it's sitting below most fans. It is not the worst right there. You got this one right there. This one is, what is it? The Swafan EX12, I do believe. And take a look at in zone. So it's just a different way of taking a look at noise information. It kind of squishes together quieter sounds and really stretches out higher pitch ones. And it doesn't really change the story for the F5. All right, let's see how this fan does in case airflow. We are on that section now. 
where I blow air through my uh, Noctua U12A cooler and see how well the fans perform. So the first graph here is airspeed versus RPM. It's basically a blade efficiency. It's how effective is this design at forcing air through that fin stack. And it's actually a little bit better blade design than my control fan idealized is at forcing air through it. How about in that noise efficiency? Well, here the F5 does pretty well. It's lining up very closely with my control fan. At higher RPMs, air speeds, it drops back a little bit, but it's not too far off. So let's see how it compares. So this was help thanks to viewers like you uh, joining me as Patreon and YouTube members. I was able to purchase a radiator, and right now I don't have a system really to uh, do a custom loop in, so I'm using it as a proof of idea, so I'm blowing air through it and measuring the difference in how easy it is for the air to go through it, comparing my, the radiator, the Nemesis uh, GTX 140 versus the U12A, and they line up very closely. This isn't saying that the cooling potential is the same, this is saying that the resistance to airflow is incredibly similar. So with that said, thank you all for tuning in and, well, helping this channel grow and succeed. As a side note, I've started 3D printing. I've started 3D printing components to help me do testing. So I hope you'll tune in for that. That's a sneak peek coming in the future. Uh, anyways, uh, taking a look at temperature in the Arctic liquid freezer. That should say liquid freezer 3 AIO. Um, and I have a couple other typos on here. I need to really fix it up. But um, I'm not particularly happy with this cooler test. Um, the test system video is up on my channel, and it's not quite granular enough. Unfortunately, uh, future revisions are going to have to wait for, well, future revisions of my overall testing methodology. I'm going to kind of stick with this for the time being. It gets some amount of data. Um, but again, helping it grow, will I'll keep pushing in that direction for revision three of my overall test uh, uh, capability. Let's go with that. So yellow is 100%. Red is 17.5 uh, decibel reading, and the blue is the 10.5. And the F5 is pretty middle of this small grouping of fans that I've tested. When compared against the A12X25, kind of a gold standard, it's uh, like 67.9 versus 71.4, like 4 degrees and like 3 degrees different. So it's pretty more or less adequate. Certainly wouldn't be overloading the CPU using it, or the thermals, uh, if you're using this, but there are better fans out there. Comparing against other fans, this is going back to air speed. So the F5 is pretty middle of the pack here at noise normalized. We got the two noise normalized values. The red is 10.5. The red is 18 decibels. And there are better fans, uh, and there are substantially worse fans. So it's middle of the pack, which is a pretty good place for it to be. Uh, locking in specific RPMs at 800 RPM, it is among the best. So over here we have how the scores are ranked, or scaled I should say. Uh, five parts airspeed to one part noise performance, uh, allowing the noise performance to be a, a one-sixth factor in how they rank, which just tells you how noisy the Iceberg Thermal Extra 120 is, considering its really high airspeed. Moving up to 1500, the ratio has changed for that weighing factor calculation. The F5 is now ranked second, and it's moving a lot of air. It's actually moving quite a bit more air than the Mega Cool 120, but it is doing it at uh, quite a bit more more noise. Now, 2.7 decibels may not seem like a lot, but every 10 decibels is doubling a noise value, so it's a quarter louder than the Mega Cool 120. Now, cranking things up to 100% PW fan signaling. Now the the new weighing factor is over there for this 100%, and the F5 is basically smack dab in the middle of the pack, and overall it's a pretty good place for it to be. So now comparing noise versus air speed versus other fans, comparing them, the F5 is pretty much in the middle of the pack. It's a little on the lower side, but it's in a perfectly adequate position. I would call it a perfectly sufficient fan. No real qualms about it. Now we're taking, taking a look at CFM. CFM testing is very simple. You got a fan, you got a tube, you blow air down the tube, and you take the airspeed at the end of it, and that's how you get CFM. That's cubic feet per minute. I don't particularly like this test because it doesn't tell you how good the fan is at actually blowing air. It just tells you how much air the fan can produce. Both factors are important, but depending on what scenario you're actually dealing with, 
whether you're going with um, air cooled, water cooled, completely water cooled, partially water cooled, the the different type of fan does matter de more depending on uh, which criteria you're actually looking at specifically. So with that in mind, uh, CFM versus RPM, the F5 is outperforming the control fan ever so slightly. Makes a lot of sense. We saw the same thing in the radiator, which or the cooler, which acts very similarly to a CFM test because it strains the airflow. Um, not to get off topic, so we got CFM versus noise rating, and very similar, except maybe the R5 is a little bit, or F5 is a little bit noisier in this one compared to the control fan, but let's keep going, see how it compares. At the noise normalized values, the F5 is sitting below the bottom middle, so it's a bit too noisy here for the amount of air it produces. At 100%, it's pretty close to the middle middle. I call it perfectly sufficient overall in that position. And now we're taking a look at that uh, CFM versus decibel rating, and it's on the bottom end of this good grouping, but in the group, good grouping it is. So it's perfectly sufficient um, for its overall application here. Now we're on to value proposition. Value proposition is not raw performance. It is performance per dollar. So you need to determine what your budget is and try to find the best fan in that budget. The, that's why this value can be kind of skewed one or another because a fan that is cheap enough, even if it's really bad, will look really good on this test. Vice versa, a fan that is top quality, the very best performer may not be sufficiently better than the next best fan, but be substantially more expensive. So that's where it's, I can't test everything like the quality of the bearing, the, the whether you like the way the fan sounds, the visual aesthetic, the RGB. So that is more up to you to decide and is not taken into account in value proposition. With that explanation aside, we got the six inch mark value per dollar or value proposition. The F5 is actually pretty much in the middle. It's doing pretty okay. But at the 11 inch mark, it's bottom. Don't buy it for bigger cases unless you're going full liquid cooled systems uh, and uh, radiators, whatever. Uh, and CFM testing, pretty much in the middle, smack dab, with this $12 fan. So that's why it's doing really well. It's not overly priced. It's a very good price point for a fan to hit. Again, this $12 fan sitting here going through coolers at noise normal values. It's a little bit on the low side, but it's okay. Um, at 100%, again, a little bit on the low side. Let's move on to my conclusion and TLDR. So the TLDR is real simple. Um, is it good for what I'm estimating to be a low wattage CPU? It's great. It ranks really well, but its value is not particularly awesome. Uh, is it good for high wattage CPUs? Yeah, it'd be a pretty good choice. There are better ones out there, but there are more ones that are worse than it. There was its, how it ranked in that position. Uh, and it's uh, an average value. So it's not bad, it's not great, it's fine. Uh, small compact computer cases. Average performer, it's rank, average value. Large computer cases, it's okay. It's not terrible, it's not meh or bad. It's okay, but its value is not great at all. So with that, that brings me to the raw data and the final conclusion. The raw data does belong to me and this channel. If you wish it for your own uses, you may go ahead and do so, but just reference me and this channel. If you would like access to the full raw data, it can be uh, gotten, I guess, in uh, two ways, by joining me either as a Patreon or as a YouTube member in my two upper tiers. You get access to my Excel data sheets uh, at various levels of um, data analysis inside them. Uh, but if you can't afford to do the higher tiers, and that's perfectly understandable, there is a lower tier to help support this channel. And if you can't, don't want to give random person on the internet money, that is also perfectly okay. But if you like the video, like the data I'm generating, please think about joining me as a mem YouTube uh, by subscribing to YouTube, because that does help this channel get more visibility and traction, and throwing me a like goes a long way. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty much always looking out for new fancy tests, so if you see something new on the market pop up, or you have a particular one of interest for me to take a look at, leave it in the comments section down below. And I'm always trying to make these videos a little bit better, so if you got constructive criticism, i take that too. Anyways, thank you very much for making it this far in the video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.